recording. All right. Well, hello, everyone. I'm Sarah Holly. I'm the director of St. Paul Ramsey County Public Health. Um, on behalf of St. Paul Ramsey County Public Health, our Environmental Health Division and Ramsey County Property Management, I want to welcome everyone to the Environmental Service Center um, listening session. Um, this is our second round of listening sessions um, in um, what would be 2023, our second round, but in 2022, we also hosted a few. Um, we're glad that you're able to join us um, this evening. And we are, as you notice, we're recording this virtual session and it will be posted on our website so that folks that are unable to attend can view this information at a later time. Um, we ask that throughout the session, um, please mute your audio for now and you know, take note of any questions that you may have for us um, later in this um, time period that we have together this evening um, so that you can ask questions towards the end of the presentation. And so we will have a presentation given this evening and then have time for discussion at the end. Next slide, please. So today you'll have a chance to hear from staff representing Ramsey County Public Health Department, Ramsey County Property Management. You will hear from Ray Eden Frank. She represents our Environmental Health Division and Jennifer McMaster. She represents property management. Um, I don't think, let me just see who's all on. Uh, we may have some of our elected officials joining us this evening, um, but we're also joined um, and please wave if you're on screen. I know we're sharing our screen right now. We're joined by John Springman, Pete Miller, Nawal Ahmed, Andrea McKinnon, and James Homoko. Um, who are county staff working on this project. We're also joined um, this evening by staff from LHB, our design firm. Um, throughout this time this evening, we may be deferring to some of our county and LHB staff to help answer questions. Um, really the objectives tonight, as you see on the screen, are to introduce the Enhancing Environmental Health Services Initiative, um, discuss plans for the Environmental Service Center, and of course, hear from you. Next slide, please. Again, I just wanna remind folks, if you do have questions, please jot those questions down. Um, we'll also um, have time to answer any questions that get put into the chat, um, but really looking forward to the discussion later this evening. Um, as a part of our some of our sessions that we've hosted in the past, we do have group agreements. And so we'd like to share those tonight. Um, you know, please, again, share your thoughts and be open-minded when we get into the discussion period of this session. Um, listen actively and respectfully when other folks are talking. Um, speak from your own experience, of course, instead of generalizing. Um, and if you have a question, please ask it respectfully and refrain from any personal attacks. Um, and also, just don't dominate the conversation. Allow others to be heard. And again, we'll have more time at the end for questions and comments. Next slide, please. Um, here at Ramsey County, we have adopted a land acknowledgement that I'd like to start the meeting off um, this evening. So I'll go ahead and read that. Every community owes its existence and vitality to generations from around the world who contributed their hopes, dreams, and energy to making the history that led to this moment. Some were brought here against their will. Some were drawn to leave their distant homes in hope of a better life. And some have lived on this land since time immemorial. Truth and acknowledgement are critical to building mutual respect and connection across all barriers of heritage and difference. We are standing on the ancestral lands of the Dakota people. We want to acknowledge the Ojibwe, the Ho-Chunk, and the other nations of people who also call this place home. We pay respects to their elders past and present. Please take a moment to consider the treaties made by the tribal nations that entitle non-Native people to live and work on traditional Native lands. Consider the many legacies of violence, displacement, migration, and settlement that bring us together here today. And please join us in uncovering such truths at any and all public events. So before we jump into the main part of the discussion this evening, we wanna center ourselves around, um, you know, really framing this project in terms of the Ramsey County goals and priorities for our county. The county goals, um, as you may know, are around well-being, prosperity, opportunity, and accountability. The project we're talking about tonight really supports the community well-being priority for the county. The county also has a priority of residents first, which includes effective, efficient, and accessible operations. 
This is another key component of the Environmental Service Center project um, that we're meeting about tonight. All right, I think I'm turning it over to Ray Eden Frank to kick off the discussion around the Environmental Service Center. Wonderful. Thank you, Director Holly, for setting the stage and welcoming participants into the uh, session this evening. Very happy to have you all here and excited to share with you about our project. Um, this is uh, what we have called our Enhancing Environmental Health Services. So this is really um, our response to community feedback about needing to design a new system so that we can really improve accessibility and participation in our recycling and our waste services, which we provide to all residents. So this system will align with those county goals that um, Director Holly was speaking about, about with around well-being, um, and it's also consistent with our residents' first approach. We are uh, our um, redesigned system is going to. Um, meet several different uh, qualities, and I'm just gonna read them off here. Uh, better address equity and environmental justice, serve more residents, help residents manage a wider variety of materials, be more cost-effective and provide greater access to programs for all residents. So really a key element of this redesign system is a county-owned environmental service center. And we can go to the next slide. So what is an environmental service center? Um, and again, I'll just sort of read off what this is and then, and then elaborate a little bit more, but it's a facility for the collection of recyclables, food scraps, and household hazardous waste. It's a permanent location for our fix-it clinics. It will include a free product reuse room where the community can find items like paint, automotive fluids, and household cleaners. And there will be space for community education programs. So the services I just listed, all of those will be available uh, to residents for free. This will replace the services that we currently offer at Bay West. So those of you who are currently utilizing the household hazardous waste services of the county at uh, Bay West on Empire Drive in St. Paul, this will replace that. And um, this will be a county owned facility. It will be located at 1700 Kent Street in Roseville. And we'll get a little bit more details about the location and the building design as we go through the presentation tonight. Uh, the facility will be built to B3 2030 sustainability standards, which is similar to the LEED certification, but it's really specific to state funded Minnesota projects. Next slide, please. So now getting into uh, some of the visualizations. And if you do have the opportunity to join us for one of our two in-person sessions, uh, one's tomorrow night and one's uh, the first week of April, we'll have these uh, visualizations, these pictures up on big boards. So if you really wanna get immersed in the, um, being able to see what this might look like, that would be an opportunity for you to do that besides being able to see it tonight on the screen. So these are some photos that represent counties and communities that have existing facilities or in the process of designing a facility. So our neighbor encounter, uh, Washington County um, in uh, Woodbury it has an existing, uh, what they call environmental center. That's an existing facility on the right. And that's a place where you can go and visit if you're interested to see some of where we've gotten some of our ideas and, um, that's a, a, a there. It's it's open for for um, for the public, so you can go there. Then in Pope Douglas, Minnesota, they're um, in a process similar to us, where they're designing a facility, and so you can see their conceptual renderings of their facility there in Pope Douglas, Minnesota. Next slide, please. So more pictures. Um, this is a sampling of some of the types of amenities that could be included inside the Environmental Service Center. So if you look around at some of these photos, you'll see an educational space. Uh, there's the spaces to drop off waste. Um, on the bottom right is the uh, product free product reuse room. Uh, and then you can see the other different ideas for the space throughout the facility in these different photos. So um, if you have, if you're seeing, if I know this is a small screen and a lot of pictures, but if there's anything that stands out for you, anything that you really see that you like, or anything that you really think is missing here, um, please feel free to use the chat to share your thoughts at any time. And then um, we'll also take some questions at the end of uh, our presentation here. Next slide. 
So more pictures, uh, this time of the outside of the facility. Um, as you will notice, most of these are in the summer or spring months, which we know is not all of the seasons in Minnesota, but um, this gives you an idea of what the facility on the outside could look like during some of our warmer months. Um, again, you can kind of look around as we'll have some potential space for folks to do educational sessions outside, um, also have some learning opportunities with some native gardens and um, some other things there. So again, if there's anything that you see that really you like uh, or anything that you are thinking is missing at this first glance at these pictures, um, we'd love to hear from you and you can put your thoughts in the chat. Next slide, please. So how do we get here? Um, this has really been a long time coming. Um, in uh, 20, 19, 2020, we started an evaluation of our current environmental services, which are offered by the county. Uh, this led to a report and a presentation to the Ramsey County Board in January of 2020. And um, then in 2021, we officially launched our Enhancing Environmental Health Services Initiative, which is what we're talking about tonight. In the fall of 2022, we had several community conversations for, I think, similar to the, how we're doing this go around with two in person and two virtual. And um, we heard from residents uh, what you liked, what you didn't like, what you were hoping for, what you're apprehensive about. We're currently in the design phase, um, and we'll get into that in a little bit about where we are and how we've gotten there. Um, and then um, coming up in the spring of 2023, well, that's here. <laughs> I'm like, wait, is it spring 2023? I look outside my window, and I'm like, I don't think it's spring, but it is spring. So here we are with our second round of community conversations. Um, and we'll continue to have more uh, community conversations. Um, and then our uh, plan is that we'll be in the construction phase starting in the fall of 2023, all the way until the fall of 2025. And our estimated building opening is in uh, the fall, a third or fourth quarter of 2025. Next slide, please. So talked a lot about the community engagement that we've done and the evaluation that we've done, um, what we've heard from you. So we've done surveys, listening sessions, and what we heard is that 94% of residents are looking forward to using the new Environmental Service Center. Residents are excited about one-stop shopping for recycling and disposal services, community space, convenient, accessible location, and some concerns that residents have shared with us are the impact to the surrounding area, traffic, safety, noise, and ensuring accessibility. And next slide, please. So about addressing your concerns, um, as far as the impact to the surrounding area, uh, we will be, some of those photos I showed will hopefully give some ideas and some thoughts around what the surrounding area will look like. New plantings will provide buffer between the site and nearby neighbors and park. The hill between the site and the park uh, will help with buffering as well. And we're going to be conducting a traffic assessment to help ensure minimal traffic disruption to surrounding areas. And then as far as ensuring accessibility, the site is centrally located in the county, and we'll talk a little bit more about that uh, in a few slides, and it's located along public transit lines and public walkways. Next slide. And I will turn it over now to Jennifer. Hi, uh, thank you, Ray. Um, that's a good setup for um, this slide right here. Um, this is a map of of the surrounding project area. You see the project area in red um, noted in the middle. Uh, the east-west um, major uh, roadway is Larpenter and uh, close by to the west side of the site there is Dale. So um, Kent Street um, is uh, close to the intersection of Larpenter and Dale. Um, we picked this uh, site after a thorough assessment um, to look at um, finding a site um, that was open, that was in Ramsey County, obviously, um, that was located um, near major roadways and within kind of a 10 to 15 minute drive for most of Ramsey County residents. Um, this site uh, 
uh, provided a place that is accessible and convenient, as well as um, uh, have a low environmental impact uh, for the residents um, in Ramsey County. And the, as uh, Ray mentioned, the site is at 1700 Kent Street in Roseville. Next slide, please. This is a, a zoomed in uh, look at the site plan. This is uh, the looking at uh, the red rectangle that we just saw at the last um, on the last slide. Uh, again, at the bottom of the screen, uh, the major roadway is Larpenter, and then the uh, the gray uh, access uh, north south into the site is Kent Street there. So a lot of consideration was, uh, a lot of thought was put into um, this site plan in order to, uh, to uh, manage uh, car circulation and uh, truck circulation throughout the site. Um, as you come off of Larpenter and turn north, um, you can see, um, the first uh, loop of public circulation that takes you in and through what is the covered drop off for materials. And then as you, before you turn back out onto the street, um, there is a parking lot um, on the south side there that is near an outdoor public space and then the main entry to the building. Now, if you don't have to come to the site to drop off uh, materials at the building, um, you can go all the way to the north end of the site. Um, there is a loop there for dropping off compost and other recycling materials. All of this public circulation is separated from um, the truck circulation, which goes um, back on the east side of the building and um, keeps truck traffic separate from public circulation. Next slide, please. This is another look at the facility. This is zooming in to uh, the building itself. On the left hand side there, you'll see um, in the, kind of the yellowish um, color, you'll see the um, the, the car circulation for uh, dropping off materials as it goes through the through the building there and then the parking lot um, in the lower left hand corner. Um, and then on the right hand side we're looking at um, a block plan of the public areas within the building. So the green um, the green on the left hand side there as Katie is pointing out, thank you is the public lobby and the entry. That's the main circulation through the building. Um, the dark green area is the reuse area. Uh, Ray mentioned um, that the reuse area is um, for materials that are free to residents. People, if there's something that um, someone drops off and it's still usable, um, something like a can of paint, um, someone would be able to pick that can of paint up and, and reuse it. Um, the blue is for um, the education and public programming spaces. Um, the dark blue um, are some uh, restrooms and some other um, just general building amenities. And then the tan color is the administration area. Next slide. I think it's back to me. Uh, the funding source, how are we going to pay for this? So the uh, Environmental Service Center is going to be paid for through the Solid Waste Fund, which is generated from the Ramsey County Environmental Charge. Um, the County Environmental Charge, we, we refer to as the CEC, is a fee on trash collection services. This fund, uh, the fund generated from this must be spent on solid waste activities and strategies. So this is an example of something that we can spend the funds on. Um, if you live in Ramsey County, as I imagine um, most of you do, you, if you look at your trash bill, you will see on there, it's actually called out the county environmental charge, um, and you'll be able to see on that bill 
what you're paying for that. So that is what's paying for the service um, for this initiative. There will be no increase to cost to residents or businesses from this project. Next slide, please. So next steps. We have a survey uh, that you were hoping that folks will take. Uh, Ramseycounty.us backslash US ESC. All these um, letters are getting slurred in my brain tonight, but, um, and I don't know, maybe, maybe we could put that in the chat and then people can uh, link to that directly. We will be doing community less, uh, listening sessions through early April. We uh, will be having an in-person session tomorrow night at Arlington Hills Community Center, 7 to 8.30. We will be having another Zoom session over the lunch hour on Tuesday, April 4th from noon to 1.30, another same session as today. And then uh, we'll do another live session, in-person session, Wednesday, April 5th from 6 to 7.30, so a little bit earlier at the Ramsey County Library in Shoreview. The presentations are going to be exactly the same at all of the different sessions we're doing. The difference with the in-person one is that you'll have the ability to look at these visuals in larger scale and be able to interact with people um, live and in person. But otherwise, the presentation is the same. So. Um, Feedback uh, gathered through this process will inform site and facility plans, and we will have preliminary facility designs to share back with community in early summer. So at this point, um, we'd really like to hear any questions that you have. If folks want us to go back to any of the slides uh, to either show the design or the internal ideas or the external site ideas, we can go back to some of those slides and otherwise we will take questions. And I think folks can either, oh, I think I, think I see you. a hand. I think folks can um, unmute themselves. Is that correct? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Looks like it. Uh -oh. oh, great. Yes. Uh, your slide on the site plan, you, you were saying that the uh, truck traffic and the user traffic is going to be separate, but it wasn't at all clear the one before there. Um, how are the trucks getting off of Larpenter? The same road? Oh, yes, sorry. They, uh, they are coming up the same road. Um, they are um, coming up that northernmost loop and then uh, back around to the loading dock. Um, we're not expecting that there is a ton of um, truck traffic. Um, a lot, a lot of the circulation we hope is uh, popularity of um, residents using the space and um, dropping off, um, dropping off their household hazardous waste. Um, that's why that um, that first loop. Um, comes off of Kent Street a little bit earlier and then in and through the covered drop off. The other mm -hmm. question that oh, was there was the compost area doesn't look very big. Is this not meant to be a, a significant uh, compost processing for, for drop off of tree debris and all that? Oh, I can, uh, I, oh. I'll push, I'm gonna urge Pete and John to jump in on that one of you two, if you're able. Oh, hi, it's uh, John Spring in Ramsey County Environmental Health, and I supervise uh, the solid waste uh, operations uh, for the county, and including in uh, in those operations is uh, yard waste and household hazardous waste. Yes, the uh, compost area, it's yes, it's labeled compost. We're not actively composting there. What it will um, involve is uh, up to four, uh, four cubic yard containers, uh, more or less trash dumpsters that have closable lids or residents can pull up, drop off their food scraps, and then that material will be then um, offloaded or hauled away to a commercial uh, compost site for composting. So more or less a drop spot just for uh, food scraps uh, does not involve yard waste uh, whatsoever. Thank you. Pete and John, to, also to Glenn's question about truck traffic, you had an estimate on number of trucks that we anticipate coming in and out of this facility week? Could you, I don't remember what that is. Can yes, that um, so weekly truck trips for recycling, we're estimating two uh, for food scraps, uh, two trips per week also. 
Um, automotive waste, uh, which we collect through a household hazardous waste, would be one trip. We do sharps collection at the facility. That's an extra trip for a truck to come once a week. Um, batteries is another trip. Um, and then we have deliveries um, for supplies and so forth. Uh, maybe a couple uh, trips a week. Uh, we'll do um, electronic waste collection there. That would involve an additional trip a week for that truck. And then we have um, where we'll collect from businesses that are very small that um, fall under a certain category that are eligible for dropping off their waste at this facility under the household has this waste program and that would be maybe two um, uh, uh, trips a week for you know those uh, individuals or those businesses coming through and then we've got just the general household has this waste pickup for all these materials we're collecting uh, we will have to ship that uh, once a week uh, under our which is what we're doing under our current um, um, schedule at our current uh, existing uh, facility at Bay West and then um, there may be a few other <clears throat> um, trucks coming and going. We do, as you can see, a little bit more rate recycling drop off at this location, but we've kind of included those tri trips in the um, the category of recycling and generalizing. So yes, uh, there will be about 15 or so per week, um, but it's, um, again, not significant um, in, in comparison to, you know, the traffic on Larpenter and even the traffic for the vehicles actually coming and using the facility. Thank you, John. I'm going to interject here. This is Director Holly. I want to um, welcome um, District 2 Commissioner Mary Jo McGuire um, to the listening session. Good evening, Commissioner. You can keep proceeding with questions. I just wanted to make sure. All right. Thanks for having, thanks for having this listening session. I, thanks for introducing me, but great to see you all, and thanks for all your good questions. I'll, I'll, I'll be listening. Thanks. Thanks Commissioner. Other questions or comments? Any other slides folks would like us to go back to? Well, if no one else, I'll go again. Um, your your uh, collection of slides from the indoor and outdoor, those two slides, uh, they're, they're awfully clean. Um, where's the working side photos? If you get my drift. <laughs> get, get your drift, yeah. Um, you, I don't know if you wanna go back to the, to the, the site plan, which shows, you can see uh, at least part of the building. You can see the parts of the building. It might be the other one. Oh, maybe it doesn't. Oh, it doesn't pull the pull out. Oh, so so the area that's not popped out. So yeah, we've been really highlighting and showing the public areas. But if you see this other yellow area in the back here, um, those are some of more of the areas where the behind the scenes and more of the, uh, for lack of a better word, dirty <laughs> parts of the operation happen. John, I don't know if you have anything else you want to say about. Yeah, in the yellow area more or less outlines uh, household hazardous waste collection and the yellow area way to the left showing the drive through lane on the blue dotted line. Uh, that's where the public would pull through uh, with doors on each end uh, to open, close, allow entry and then uh, staff from the other side of that wall in between the two yellow areas will you know service the vehicles, bring the materials over to the the yellow area on the right side, and that's where everything is categorized, processed, packaged, and then moved into the uh, loading dock areas way to the right um, into the trucks for um, you know final um, uh, uh, shipping of material off site. Maybe just to get the conversation moving too, you know, what excites you about this, this part of the process, right? I think some of you may have joined us um, back this um, kind of earlier this fall when we introduced the project. And so we're at this point of showing you design, but what excites you about this design? What concerns you? What other advice or feedback would you give Ramsey County Public Health and Property Management this evening?
Permanent site for a fix-it clinic sounds nice. They get to keep all their tools there. Thank you. Fix-it clinics are very popular, right? Thank you, Katie. That's the public programming area. So space, having space for that. What else? I think I see Stevenson. Sherlin, did you drop off there? There you are. Any comments or questions? And just thinking generally, what are the things that you've seen that you like? And is there anything that's really glaring for you that's missing? Feel free if you don't want to pop on, if you want to write anything in the chat, or if you don't want to be as public about what you want to share, then we also have the survey and encourage you to click on that link and share your thoughts on the survey as well. All right. Well, we don't want to hold people up this evening. Um, you know, that gift of time back is really important. Um, if we can put the link to the survey in the chat, I'm not sure when people joined it or at what point, be good to just encourage people. And you can share the survey link out. Um, I think Nawal put it in the chat earlier, but we'll reshare it. Thank you, Katie. Um, questions, you can always reach out to us at the askeh at ramseycounty.us. Um, there's a lot of information on the Ramsey County Environmental Service Center project website um, where you can stay up to date on, you know, progress with this project. Um, I'll have one of the team members share our next um, virtual and in-person session. I think we have one happening tomorrow and we have a few happening at the beginning of April. So and I just want to extend a thank you to everyone for just coming here this evening and um allowing us to share this information and just kind of the progress of um, this very large um, project that we have going on in public health and environmental health. We really wanna bring people along on this journey. Um, thank you, Ray and the wall. And so our next sessions are of course, tomorrow, Tuesday, March 21st from seven to 8.30 PM. Again, this is in person at Arlington Hills Community Center. Um, right in St. Paul. And then we, um, yep, it looks like no, I'll put the same thing in the chat. And then we'll have a few sessions too, both virtual and in-person that first week in April. So I just wanna thank everybody for coming this evening. And please, if you're on here, and if you're a community member, share the information with your neighbors, with your friends that live in Ramsey County. We really wanna get feedback at this point in the process. I wanna thank the staff and our commissioner for being here this evening also, and for you spending your time, a little bit of time with us um, this evening. So without further ado, I think we'll wrap up this evening. And um, again, send us any questions you have at the askeh at ramseycounty.us. Have a wonderful evening, everyone.